Here we're going to be working with an application of function composition. We're told that Lisa makes $18 per hour at her new part-time job. Write a function in part A, and this function is called I, that represents Lisa's income for the week if she works H hours. So if we want to write a function then, for every hour she works, her income is $18, so that would be pretty straightforward, just 18H. If we look at the table below, when the inputs are 5, 10, 15, and 20, we're going to multiply each one of those times 18 to get the corresponding output. So that's going to be 90, which is 5 times 18, 180, which is 10 times 18, 270, which is 15 times 18, and 360, which is 20 times 18. But that one was pretty straightforward. Let's look at part B. Lisa puts 10% of her salary in her bank savings every week and $10 into her piggy bank. Write a function S to represent the total amount of money she saves each week if her income is I dollars. So what we're assuming here is that her income and her salary, that that, that really means the same thing. So let's take a look at how we would set that up. If she saves 10% of her salary, which is really 10% of her income, same thing, we would take 0.10i, that's 10% each week of whatever she brings in, plus $10. So that is how we would write a function for S of I. S represents how much she saves based upon her, her income every week. Now, looking at this series of inputs, plugging those in for i, so 90 times 0 0.10 plus 10 will give us 19. 180 times 0 0.10 plus 10 is 28. 270 times 0 0.10 plus 10 is 37. And 360 times 0 0.10 plus 10 is 46. And you can do all of those on your calculator or in your head, whichever makes the most sense, but just write them out as we have here. So in part C, it says using the information above, write a formula for S of I of H. So this is the function composition where the savings is the outer function and the income is the inner function. So let's see how that would work. Our savings says take 0.10 times i, but in this case i is 18h. So I'm going to put that in place of i plus 10. And if I multiply the 0.10 times 18, I get 1.8h plus 10. So what this function composition allows us to do is to write a function where the hours that she works each week are the input and the output is the amount that she's able to save. So what we're bypassing with this composition function is the income. The income is in here but it's not explicitly stated at this point. So what we have is savings in terms of number of hours worked. And so if we compute the values for the table here, when input is five in this function, output is 19. Notice we are gonna end up getting the same results that we did up here. When input is 10, output is 28. When input is 15, output is 37. When input is 20, again, we're just inputting here, 20 times 1.8 plus 10 is 46. So these outputs that we got S of I and these S of I of H are the same exact thing. So it's just another way of looking at the function where we don't actually have to know what the income is here in this function to compute the amount that's saved. All we need to know is how many hours that she worked. 
So when we look at what the function represents then, S of I of H indicates the amount of money Lisa saves each week. That's the output. That is the outer function. The S is her savings based upon how many hours she works. That is the input. So it's savings as the output and hours that she works is the input. If I'm asked to interpret the meaning of the statement S of I of 10 equals 28, well, the hours is 10. So if she works 10 hours in a given week, she is going to save $28. We can write that out. If Lisa works 10 hours in a given week, that's the input, she's able to save $28. So the whole notation and all that we've used in this problem can be a little bit confusing. So you just need to focus on what is the input and what is the output for each of your functions along the way.